Okay, so let's look at what's called authenticated key exchange. And in this way, Bob and Alice will be able to end up with the same shared key at the end of the exchange. And Eve, even though Eve has been listening to the communications, will not be able to tell what that key is. So we'll look at long-term uh, public and private keys and then how we can uh, derive a secret key or a session key based on that long-term key. As part of this, we'll look at uh, discrete log implementations. So these are the methods that were initially defined uh, in a paper uh, here by these three authors, M, T, and, and I. And they defined a number of authenticated key exchange methods known as A0, B0, C1, and C2. And they built on the basics of the Diffie-Hellman method. But now, these days, we typically use elliptic curve methods as they are much faster and more efficient in their operation. So we'll take a couple of examples of how we convert from discrete logs into elliptic curve methods and hopefully you'll be able to see how easy it is to convert from discrete logs into elliptic curve methods. So here we are. So this is the the basics of our Diffie-Hellman key exchange. So initially uh, Bob and Alice agree on a G value, a generator value. Uh, often that's a value of two or five or something like that. And then they agree, because this is discrete logs, on a prime number P. And the basic operations that we have are G to the power of A mod P. So this is what's called a finite field, and that the range of the values that we get will range between zero and P minus one. And then we create what's called a ring and we can actually uh, loop around. This constrains the, the values that we have between 0 and p minus 1. As we use in discrete logs, we use a generator uh, value, and then we raise that to a certain power. And as uh, John Napier showed, if we take g and uh, g to the power of a times g to the power of b, that's equal to g to the power of a plus b. And John Napier also showed if we take g to the power of a and then take that to the power of b, that's equal to g a b. And that's the two main operations that we're going to use in terms of our elliptic curve method. So with a discrete, with Diffie-Hellman method, uh, Alice creates a random value a, and Bob creates a random value B. Then uh, we take our generator value and we uh, raise that to the power of A and then take mod of P. The mod P operation is the remainder of a divide by P. And that gets sent over. That's equivalent to Alice's public key or big A there. It should not be possible for Eve to be able, or Bob to be able to determine the value of A purely from the value of B, of uh, big A. Bob will do the same. It will calculate B is equal to G to the power of B mod P. And they will send these values over. So even though Eve is, is listening, she shouldn't be able to determine what the uh, private values are that have been created. Then Alice takes B and raises it to the power of A, mod P. And Bob takes A, raises it to the power of B, which he knows, and then does a mod P there. This is G to the power of B, to the power of A. And this is G to the power of A, to the power of B. And in the end, they end up with the same shared value and because of the the magic of the mod p operation then it will end up the same 
Okay, and this is the uh, the uh, Diffie-Hellman method. Unfortunately, what can happen in here is that uh, we can get an eave in the middle here. And with an eave in the middle, uh, there is no way to authenticate that it's Bob or Eve which sends the message that is received. And uh, Eve could be in the middle and negotiating two keys between herself and Alice and herself and Bob. So what we really need is authenticated key exchange and that there is some way for us to determine for each session that we're still talking to Alice or Bob. So the methods that are defined within uh, MTI uh, include A0. So with this what we have is an initial setup phase where Bob and Alice can uh, communicate their long-term uh, keys. And this could be done in an authenticated way where we made sure that Alice was Alice and Bob was Bob. So in this case, originally uh, Alice and Bob generate A and B, and then we end up with a long-term value of Z, uh, B, and a long-term value of Z, A, there. For each session, we then end up taking a random value, X, and again, uh, we, Alice sends over this value here, and then Bob does the same. Then what happens when we calculate uh, the key, we take uh, Bob's uh, newly generated public key, and we raise it to the power of A, and we take the long-term public key, and we raise that to the value of X for Alice. Uh, Bob will do the same, but obviously it will be Alice's public key and Alice's long-term key, and he'll raise to the power of uh, B here, and then Y here. And this will work. Uh, this is the two values here, and if we just try these, these values out, then this will equal G pub is g to the power of y to the power of x times zb, which is g to the power of b to the power of a. Okay, so that will become gxy gab, and that will of course be gxy plus ab. Uh, becomes our our uh, shared key and that will be mod p and if we expanded this out here we should end up with the same shared uh, value and in the end we can check that this value is, is correct so as a little demonstrator if this is the code that uh, we could use to generate this Okay, so there's the A and the B value initially. That's the long-term keys. We'll then uh, generate the session keys, the session public key values. And this is our result here. This is P, P pub to the power of A. And this is equivalent to this here. And then this is this part uh, in here. Okay, so in the end, hopefully, they should end up the same uh, shared key. So we'll just try that out. Okay, so we'll try with uh, a prime number of 128 bits. Um, we can see every time we try, we end up with the same shared key there. We can even try bigger values. This is 256 bit prime numbers. And we end up with the same value here. Okay, we can uh, then uh, generate these values and look at the, the result that we get. Okay, so if you're interested in the code, this should be here uh, to be able to 
uh, determine these uh, values. Okay, so that's the operations that we did here, and we're multiplying two uh, exponentials together. And in the end, we always take the, the mod p. Okay, so that's one method. So now let's convert this into an elliptic curve method. So rather than having discrete logs, such as this, we convert that into what's called a multiplicative operation or a scalar operation on a, on a point. With elliptic curve, rather than having a generator value g, we have a point on the elliptic curve. This is called the base point. And then what we do is that we add, we perform an add operation and we add the point g n a times in this case to give us a g. So it becomes a multiplicative operation rather than uh, an exponential operation. So rather than g to the power of a, we will take a times g, and rather than g to the power of b, we'll take b times g, and so on. And then in the end, we'll end up with these keys there. So that becomes uh, z uh, a times zb, which is b, g uh, plus x and then this part here is y g so this is a point addition which we can do quite efficiently in uh, in elliptic curve methods so the two main methods that we have for elliptic curve is a point multiplication like this one and a point addition, such as this one here. Okay, and in the end, both will end up with ABG plus XYG. Uh, so here is the code for this one. So what we should see is that uh, we will generate an initial value uh, that we get for A and B, and this is uh, created between 0 and n. So g is the base point and n is what's called the order of the curve. So the maximum value we can get is n minus 1 between 1 and n minus 1. So we generate the a value between 1 and n minus 1 over the order and then b will do the same and then we calculate the long-term public key which is a times g and b times g. Then we go ahead and do the same for the x and y for the session. And we see here, we create our, our value here. This is this part in here. And this is this part in there. And then we can perform a point addition, as we have there. And then hopefully in the end, we will we'll end up with the same key. So I've used uh, key A0, which is the x coordinate of the point, as we only really need one value. So let's look at this code. Okay, so in this case we don't have uh, a difference in the with the size of the prime number. It's a fixed one for the elliptic curve, and we're using ECP two five six K one. This is the elliptic curve used in Bitcoin, and we see here that we are ending up with the same shared key. And just as a check, we'll check A B plus X Y. And then we'll multiply that by the point scale and multiply by the point g and we see we end up with the same value the one thing to notice here is that when we're working out the a times b plus x y we take the mod of the order of the curve because that's the maximum value that we can have we can then multiply that with our, our g value and then we'll just check 
that that value is equal to these uh, values that both Bob and Alice have computed. And we can see that that's the case. We can try lots of examples and lots of different values for the A and the B value, for the X and the Y. We end up with different public key values. You notice that that's a point there for the public key where the A and the B values are scalar values and we always end up with the same uh, shared value. Okay, so another method that was defined is MTI B, B0. This is slightly different. Uh, so again, we're using the same long-term uh, public key value there. Uh, but this time, what we do is that we use this value and carry it forwards to there. So we then take that value and raise it to the power of x. Uh, uh, Bob will do the same. Raise his value to the power of y, which is his secret. And we get these values sent over here. To be able to reverse the value, we can perform an A or inverse A or A to the minus one to remove the 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 A value from the from the from this part of the key. So over here, B public is equal to B public Z A, which is G A. a and then a to the minus one here and then we'll have g to the power of x so g pub z a to the power of y and there and this operation here when we have g to the power of a to the power of the inverse of a, then that will end up being uh, one. So we'll end up with g y g x, and the same should happen here. We'll end up with g x y, and they will end up being uh, the same. So this operation involves an inverse of uh, the secret value that, that we have for this one. So let's look at the code related to this one. So the one difference here that we've had is that we're now calculating the inverse mod. So we take A and we do an inverse mod of P minus one. So not P, but P minus one because it's a power and that gives us our inverse values. We can then use that to be able to perform this operation and uh, here. Okay, so again, if we try the code, we should be able to see that this works. Uh, we're using the discrete log one again, so we'll take, say, 128 bits, and we just make sure that our keys are the same. That's fine, and that when we check uh, g to the power of xy, so if I go back, to where we were, then it's g to the power of x, y is x plus y is the result. Okay, so then in our code, uh, we can see here, it's g to the power of x, y mod p. Okay, so if we want to do that in the electric curve way, as we saw, it's the same again. There's the A and the B. And this time we multiply by the X value, we multiply by that, and then we do an inverse for A here, and an inverse for B, uh, in order to, to produce our res the same result on the other side. So this key here will be X, A to the minus one, Bob's public key will be y, and then za 
is E G. This will cancel and this will cancel and we end up with X, Y, uh, G for the, the result there. Okay, so here's the code for this. So in this case again we do our inverse mod to go to determine it and then this time we do it on the order of the curve which is N for that and we should get the same key in the end and then when we check we should find this equal to X, Y, G. Uh, two other methods that can be used are C0 and uh, you can follow up the maths on this one uh, and also uh, C, C1 which does it slightly differently uh, but we end up with the same uh, shared key in each case okay so the, here's the here's the code that relates to the C1 example but you should find that the code is given on these pages and we should end up with different methods to be able to calculate the shit key. In this case, it's g to the power of a, b, x, y gives us our, our result. And we can check that here. g to the power of a, b, a, b, x, y. There. And then if we want to look at the elliptic curve equivalent for that one, then it's equal elliptic curve version. And there's the elliptic curve version of C0. Uh, but you see how different the, the methods look. OK, so that's been an introduction to Authenticated Key Exchange and it overcomes the problems that we have with the code diffie hellman method which only allows us, to, which uh, suffers from uh, an eve in, in the middle. Uh, if you're interested, uh, have a look at the code, the Python code for each of the methods and you should be able to try out your own. As I said, discrete logs have now moved on to elliptic curve methods and hopefully you've seen how easy it is to convert from a discrete log problem into an elliptic curve one.